What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here with a brand new tutorial for you today from designcuts.com. In this tutorial we'll be creating a beautiful magical scene in Photoshop. To make our scene come to life, we'll be using some actions, textures, and overlays from the Ultimate Essential Photography Bundle featuring artists such as Photo Spirit, Pro Add-ons, Twin Brush, and many more. This brand new design bundle is our first ever photography bundle, bringing the most varied and high quality collection anywhere. Let's see how some of these elements can be put to use to create some cool and professional looking effects. If you're all ready to make some magic, then fire up Photoshop and let's get started. Now to begin, we're gonna make a new document that's 11 inches wide by 17 inches tall. We can leave the resolution set to 300, color mode set to RGB, and the background content set to white. Now, before we go ahead and create our document, let's just go ahead and give our document a name. I'm just going to call this Magical Scene Tutorial because it's going to be magical. Now once you've done that, go ahead and click Create from the lower right hand corner and you should now just have a blank white document with a solid background layer. So to get started, let's go up here to the File menu and choose Place Embedded so that we can import our stock photo. Now for this portion, I wanted just to point out to you guys that this is not part of the freebies, but there is a link to download this free stock photo from Unsplash in the written portion of the design tutorial. So be sure to check that out. Go over to the written portion, get the link, and download this image so that you can follow along. Now, once you've brought this in, it's going to be brought in as a smart object with the file name automatically in the layer. So before we press return to commit to the changes, hold the control key and click on the image. And let's go ahead and choose rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. Now what we're going to do from here is hold the shift and the alt option keys and then scale this up from the center until it fills the entire canvas vertically. Now you can go ahead and maybe slide it over if you want it to be a little bit off center. And then once you're happy with the placement, go ahead and press enter on the keyboard. Now the next thing we're going to do is select this background layer and delete it so that all we're left with is our smart object layer containing our free stock photo. Now, I want to introduce you guys to Photoshop Actions in case you haven't used them before. Now, there's a lot of great actions in this new photography bundle to check out, but I'm just going to give you guys a small sample of what they're like. So, this one in particular requires us to create a background layer. We just deleted our background layer, so how can we now turn this into the new background layer? Well, it's actually quite easy. We're just going to select the layer, come up here to the Layer menu, and choose New Background from Layer. Now once you've done that, you can see this is just called background and it has a small lock icon next to it, which is exactly what we need to use our actions. So come up to the window menu and open the actions panel. And let's see, I'm just gonna delete this for a second. I already had the actions loaded up, but I wanna show you guys how to load up actions on your own. So to do that, I'm gonna click on this little hamburger menu in the upper right corner of the actions panel, scroll down and choose load actions. Now, once you've done that, go over to the freebies folder into the twin brush folder and select this ATN action file. It's called authentic HDR. All right, now go ahead and click open to open the action. And once you do that, you'll see that you have a folder in here with the name of your action. And if you click on that small arrow to expand it, you can not only see the action inside, but it's gonna show you all the steps that are included in this action. Now, you don't have to be worried about any of those steps. All we're concerned with here is the action inside of the folder. You'll notice that when I have this highlighted, I can press play, but if I have the main root folder selected, I don't have that play option. So be sure to click this arrow to expand the contents of the folder and select this action inside, and then go ahead and press play. Now, it's just gonna take a couple of moments here, but it's going to run through all of those steps that have already been done and recorded to give you guys some nice HDR effects. All right, so now that we've let the actions play, you can see that you've got a series of folders here that have been created. And if you click on each one, you'll get a very different looking effect. So there's four different HDR effects here. Now, the one that I found to be the most interesting is HDR3. However, it's a little bit intense, so I'm just going to press V to get my move tool, and then the number five on the keyboard and that's just the shortcut to reduce this folder to 50% opacity. So it's not quite as intense, but it still produces a pretty cool looking effect. Now let's go ahead and turn on the visibility of this color adjustments folder. Click on the arrow to expand the contents and turn on photo filter three. 
Now, once you've turned on Photo Filter 3, what we're going to do is select the regular HDR photo, hold the Command key, and then also select HDR2 and HDR4 since we are not using these folders. And once you've done that, all you need to do is press Delete to get rid of them. Now, with this HDR3 folder selected, come down here to the Adjustment Layer icon, and we're going to add a Curves Adjustment Layer. Now, once you have this open in your Properties panel, let me just bring that over here so you guys can see what I'm doing. All we're gonna do is put a point in the center of the grid here, maybe move it down into the right a little bit just to add some contrast. Now for this first point, I wanna change the input to about 142 and the output to around 118. Now I'm gonna make a second point a little bit higher from the first one. Now for this, let's go ahead and enter the values 173 for the input and we'll change the output to 160. So you now have these two points along your grid. And if I turn that on and off, you can see that it makes our image and photo a lot punchier. Let's go back to the adjustment layer icon, and this time we'll add a black and white adjustment layer. Now, we'll change the blend mode from normal to soft light, and then let's just go ahead and drop the opacity down to five, which if you remember, the shortcut is just the number five on the keyboard. Now, if you wanted to make it 70%, you would just press seven, 90% you could just press 9 and so forth. So it really just goes by increments of 10. The next thing that I want to do here is select this color adjustments folder at the very top and come back down to the adjustment layer icon and now scroll all the way to the bottom and choose this option here that says gradient map. Now what this is going to do is apply this nice tone over our entire image, but I want to modify the colors that are in here. So if you come back to the properties panel over here, you'll see that it looks like this kind of dark purple to white gradient. But if I click on this strip, I can now come in here into the gradient editor and modify all of these colors that we have here. So let's select this square on the lower left of this strip and then click on the color box here. And for this color, I want to enter the hex value FF5400. Click OK. And now select the square on the bottom right and then click the color box once again. And this time I'll enter the hex value 010727, which is another nice deep purple color. Now click OK twice to apply the changes and close out of the box. Now this isn't exactly what we want, but we've got the right colors in here. So what we need to do to fix this up is first check off this box that says reverse. Okay, and that's going to switch those colors around. Now once you've done that, come over here and change the blend mode from normal to hue. All right, and now you can see that we've got a much nicer looking effect. So it's still kind of colorizing our photo to make it mostly just orange and dark purple, but it's doing it in a much more natural looking way. Now let's go ahead and come back down to the adjustment layer icon and choose levels. And we'll just add a little bit more contrast to that by sliding this left slider in a bit towards the center until it's set to about 13. Or you can just manually input that value here. Now that we've done that, let's select the levels adjustment at the very top, hold the shift key and select the HDR3 folder and then press command Control g to put it into a new group folder, double click the group one text, and just call this folder FX. So if I now turn that on and off, you can see our original photo and all of the effects that we've just applied. So we've already got some really cool looking results, and most of that is thanks in part to this great action here created by TwinBrush. All right, but with a little bit of tweaking and playing around some adjustment layers and different blending modes, you can really get some interesting looking results. From here, let's continue. I'll come back up to the file menu and choose Place Embedded. And I'm going to go back to the Freebies folder. And this time we'll choose Pro Add-ons 2, which is this nice abstract light. And then I'm going to choose Place. Now hold the Control key and click on the image and choose Flip Horizontal so that we can change the orientation here. And now I'm going to move this out of the way here, move my panels to the side. Move my cursor over any of the four corners of the bounding box and drag outwards while holding Alt, Option, and Shift. Now I want to crop this so that I can kind of position it a little bit differently. So I'm going to, you know, maybe move this a little bit, maybe move it up a little bit as well. Somewhere around here I think is okay. And then I'll just press Enter to apply the changes. Now change the blend mode from normal to screen. And that's going to hide all of the dark areas in the image so that we're only seeing the light parts. Now with that two smart object layer still selected, I'm going to hold the Alt Option key and this time click on the adjustment layer icon and apply a levels adjustment. Choose use previous layer to create clipping mask and click OK. 
And now let's move that left slider inwards until it's set to around maybe 32 or 34, some more around there just to bring out the contrast a little bit more. And then once you've done that, select the levels adjustment layer, hold the shift key and select the two smart object layer below, and now press command control J to duplicate both of those layers together. Now just select the two copy smart object layer, press command control T to do a free transform, hold the control key and click on the image, and then choose flip horizontal, and then hold control and click again, and this time choose rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Okay, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and play around with the positioning of this one a little bit more as well. Maybe I'll scale it down a bit, just to mix it up. Okay, slide it up a little bit as well. So we can just get this kind of fiery part of the image somewhere around the, the upper chest and neck area. About there looks pretty good. And then we'll press enter once again to apply the changes. Now select that top levels adjustment layer, hold the shift key and select our original two smart object layer. And once again, press command control G to put it into a group folder. Double click on the group one text and change this to abstract light. All right, let's move on. We'll come up to the file menu, choose place embedded once again. And now we can bring in some nice gritty textures. So I'm just going to back it up for a second, come back to the freebies folder. And this time let's go into the photo spirit folder in the freebies and I'll choose dust and scratches 11. Now click on place to bring in our texture, hold the control key and click on the image and then choose rotate 90 degrees clockwise. Now from here, hold the alt option and shift keys and scale up until this image extends a bit outside of our canvas area here, and then press enter on the keyboard. Now, once again, as you might've guessed, we're gonna change the blend mode from normal to screen so that we can see our photo below. And then we'll come back up to the file menu again and choose place embedded. And we'll go ahead and select our next dust and scratches texture. We'll grab 17 and choose place. Hold the control key and click on the image. And this time we'll choose rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise and then hold the control key and click again and maybe say flip horizontal just so we can mix it up, right? Even if you're just transforming it, rotating it, anything to make it look just a little bit different from the standard image the way it is. Now press enter to apply the changes and change the blending mode from normal to screen. I'm also going to reduce the opacity of this layer to 50% just by pressing five on the keyboard. And then I'll select this top texture, hold shift and select the second texture below and press command control G to put it into a group folder that I'm going to rename dust and scratches. Now hold the alt option key and click on the adjustment layer icon at the bottom of the layers palette. And now I'll choose levels, check off the use previous layer to create clipping mask option and click OK. And now we're just going to move this left slider in a bit until it's somewhere around 12. All right, just to get more contrast there, and you can kind of see how that looks if I turn that adjustment layer on and off. And that's looking pretty nice. Now come back up to the file menu, place embedded once again, and this time I want to select this nice pro photography lens flare. Now there's a good variety of these in the full bundle, but this was just one that I thought worked really nicely. I really like the gradation from the cool into the warm tones here. Let's go ahead and use this one and just click on place. Now, once you've brought it in, hold the control key and click on the image and choose rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise, and then hold control and click once again and choose flip horizontal. Now, I'm going to scale this up from the center by dragging outwards while holding alt option and shift on the keyboard. And I'm gonna make it nice and big. Let me just zoom out a little bit. Somewhere about there seems pretty good. And then I'll just go ahead and change the blending mode of this layer to screen. Hold the Alt Option key and click on the Adjustment Layer icon and add a Curves Adjustment Layer. And then also go ahead and check off this option here to create a clipping mask and click OK. And I'm just gonna add one point in the middle of the grid here and maybe set the input to somewhere around 145 or 146 and the output can be set to 123. Now I'm gonna select that top adjustment layer, hold Shift and select the Pro Photo Lens Flare Smart Object below and press Command Control G double click on the layer and we'll just rename this folder flare. Now, if you want to, you can come in here and maybe, you know, play around with the size or the positioning of this flare a little bit more. I think I actually want to make it just a little bit larger. And then we can just collapse that folder again 
We come back up to the file menu so we can embed our next image. This time I'm going to grab the paper and canvas texture just to add a nice little bit of grit and texture over our entire image and choose place. Hold the control key and click on the texture and choose rotate 90 degrees counterclockwise. And then I'm just going to scale it up by dragging outwards while holding Alt, Option, and Shift. Okay, press Enter to apply the changes. And now what I want to do is come up to the image menu and choose Adjustments and Invert It. Okay, so that just inverted the color and everything else, but we're not finished there. We're going to go to the blending modes and change it from normal all the way down here to subtract. And then reduce the opacity to about 60% by pressing the number six on the keyboard. Hold the Alt Option key, click on the adjustment layer icon, and apply a black and white adjustment layer. Check off this box here. Once again, use previous layer to create clipping mask and click OK. And that's just gonna remove the color from that texture so that basically it's just making it black and white so that we still have all of our original colors from the image below. All I'm gonna do here is select that top adjustment layer Hold the Shift key and select the paper and canvas texture. Press Command Control G to put it into a folder. Double click on the folder name and call this Paper Texture. Now that we've done that, this about wraps up our magical scene here in Photoshop. I've walked you guys through the process of using some actions and layering up some cool abstract lights, flares, and a bunch of different textures. To do this, we've just used a small handful of the elements that you guys will find in the Ultimate Essential Photography Bundle. Now this all new photography bundle is a massive and diverse collection of Lightroom presets, retouching kits, stunning photo overlays, video tutorials, and a lot more. So we've really just kind of scratched the surface with this tutorial, but already you can see what kinds of great looking effects you guys can create with this bundle. So I hope that you guys will find this tutorial helpful and hopefully you'll be able to apply some of these tips and techniques in your own work. And as always, we'd love to see how you use these elements, so be sure to share that with us. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Eric Vasquez, and we'll see you next time.